Hello, I'm Dr. Jen Baxter, and I am the Chief Engineer at the Institution of Mechanical Engineers. And I'm here today interviewing Diane Gilpin, who is a good friend of mine and founder of Smart Green Shipping. And we're going to talk through some of the challenges that, that we find in decarbonising the shipping industry. So, Diane, just very quickly, can you identify what you see as the key challenges for decarbonising shipping? Yeah, the biggest challenge is that we've got a very 20th century system, international interconnected system operating on fossil fuels that needs to quickly pivot to a 21st century renewable powered system uh, without any money. So that's kind of something of a challenge. And if you could identify within the industry, either a government or a, an organisation who is really focused on this challenge and is performing or carrying out best practice, what would it be? There's um, a lot of political activity. The International Maritime Organization has committed to decarbonizing shipping, uh, but it's challenging to get 174 countries to agree to short-term measures. Uh, the EU and the UK governments are very active and very ambitious. So I think we're working in with the UK government on the Clean Maritime Plan to start driving the uh, uptake of zero emission shipping as soon as possible. And so we know that there aren't really uh, any emissions that belong specifically to nations from the shipping industry. And that makes it a double challenge, I guess, for the International Maritime Organization to actually monitor this in some way. Is there something that you would recommend that our own nations did in order to take control of some of those emissions? I think there's a great opportunity for uh, exporting technology. I think we've got a great opportunity for developing um, engineering solutions to this really huge challenge. And we're doing a great job. We're really well set up, particularly in the UK, for doing it. Um, so I think we should be driving forward as a manufacturing opportunity uh, and delivering uh, examples, exemplar uh, solutions to the market. So you talked a little bit there about technologies and we often hear about the opportunities for low carbon fuels, for example, to replace bunker fuel in shipping, which is very polluting. Are there some other technologies that you think we should be focusing on a little bit more to rapidly decarbonise in the short term? Yeah, we can fit wind to every single ship that's possible to fit wind to, which is bulkers and tankers. Um, and we can start reducing emissions by about 20 percent if we use modern 21st century wing sail solutions. Uh, then there's hull coatings and there's a plethora of other emission or, or fuel saving uh, technologies that we can combine that would make an immediate impact. So you talked about wind there. Now, often people will think about wind and shipping as very sort of straightforward sails. They might think of it as quite an old fashioned solution to powering our ships. Can you explain a little bit more about what you mean by wind powered ships in a 21st century shipping industry? Yeah, so if we think about wind, we're just thinking about energy. And if we think about the way that the um, onshore, offshore wind, if a power sector has emerged, we're not using windmills anymore. It's the same solution. It's the same sort of thinking. This is how do we use modern technology, digital, lightweighted uh, materials, that sort of thing, uh, to come up with solutions to harness the maximum amount of energy because wind is abundant and exclusively available to the ships that are fitted with wind powered solutions. So what we've done with Smart Green Shipping is work with um, some of the world's best yacht racing designers, uh, taken ideas that have been developed in America's Cup uh, racing, made them more robust and made them more practical to work in the global shipping system. You talked a little bit there about working with the racing industry and shipping, and we've seen in very recent days, there are incredible collaboration and innovation between Formula One, some of our universities and ventilator manufacturers in order to overcome the challenges of COVID-19. Do you think there are things that we could learn from that process and actually bring into the shipping industry? So when we come out of the current crisis, we can start to ensure that shipping doesn't go back necessarily to the way it was and it looks actually to the future to be much greener. Undoubtedly, there's an opportunity here to build back better. I think we have um, collaboration at, at the heart of the Smart Green Shipping Alliance and we are developing um, solutions with 
naval architects, from racing, from marine engineers, um, working with academics, working with cargo owners, ship owners, ports, all sorts of people are bringing their expertise and willingness to the table. And we've identified the problem and working together, we can find solutions quickly. So you and I, we've been working with the shipping industry for several years now, looking at what the opportunities are for decarbonisation. What would you say either to the shipping industry or to governments or to both today, if you could, as your one key message that we should do in order to move forward decarbonisation and shipping? Definitely uh, demonstrators. We need to see demonstrators on the water. We can collaborate government and industry to deliver demonstrators that give comfort to the market that the technology works. It allows us to um, develop a platform for selling the systems and the solutions, and it gives us an opportunity to accelerate learning so we can progress the speed of technology development that much faster. That's great. Thank you so much, Diane, for talking to us today. And that's it from this episode of IMEC TV. I hope you've enjoyed listening and watching this particular programme. And we hope that we'll be able to talk to you all again soon.